Turn Magna's, you know. Oh, see that Magna again. Giving people access mm -hmm. to uh, one before that. Oh, nope. There, there we go. Uh, all right, so Macna, again, I, I shared that I went to that iMac, I changed the way I do things, man, and I took every little note I could mm. possibly take down, changed my life, man. Like I, like, I understand now the, like, the difference between a uh, mentor and just kind of community sourcing knowledge. Right. And, like, these guys, man, know their stuff. We're watching mm. Jake, we're watching Julian debate Refugium. <laughs> like, and now for the first time in 2014, they let us film all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, share it share with, the, with world. the universe. And you know what? Like, people are always scared of stuff. So that first conversation I had with Macna was, well, if we share all of these videos, mm. then nobody will have a reason to come to Macna. Not true, obviously. Not true. Yeah. You know what? If you share the value of coming to Macna, people come to Macna. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's a, there, I mean, there's a lot of people. There's a couple, uh, you know, different camps. Some come to see all the new gear. Come, some come to hear the speakers. A lot of them come for both. But uh, if you didn't know what the message was that they're saying at those Macnas, at, at those speakers, I, I almost I, I want to go travel and see this live. Like I will go to my next Macna so I can catch this and soak it in in person. Yeah, I'll tell you, but it's good about every, probably once every three years. Like a lot of times the information kind of gets regurgitated at the different shows through mm -hmm. the different uh, things. But every few years, like all the knowledge kind of evolved. So whether you're watching it on YouTube or, or whether or not you're going to these things, man, like I think a lot of reefers now would go and say, oh, I have heard a lot of this stuff or whatever, yeah. right? But like if you're a reefer in your first, you know, few years of it, like, this will change your universe. <laughs> and, like, I will uh, totally change the way you look at all this stuff and like suddenly really understand who's worth listening to and it's those two guys at the front of the room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Jake and Julian. Uh, all right. Oh, next one. Okay. I love this one. I remember this one from before I got in the hobby and watching this. Holy crap. Still investigating, right? So yeah. now we're investigating surface area of rock. And this, the reason for this one's because I'm irritated with this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no, Fiji's the best. No, Tonga's the best. No, Reef Saver's the best. Yeah, everybody's talking about surface area based on like what it looks like or, mm. you know, and, and like just totally made up stuff. I and have no idea. If it goes off of what it looks like, Fiji can be deceiving. Yeah, uh, you know, who, who knew, man? Yeah. yeah. And so what we did, we did two things in that Investigates uh, back in 2014. We didn't call it Investigate still. Still. Uh, it's just like we're, just we're trying to challenge, man, common knowledge, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in that one, we found two things out. One, we sent all of the materials out to a lab. They uh, like did some kind of weird nitrogen testing in the gash. They crushed up the material and they got like a surface area of that specific material. Ah. And was it Fiji that was the best? It was, well, I think we can, can you pull that one back I, up again real quick? We'll see right here. Okay, so, but there was two tests here. So Fiji had the, had the most, most. And yeah. it's a natural organism. That, this is rock that's in the ocean, no, no surprise. Marine Pier, Reef Saver, Pupani, and then Tonga. Of course, Tonga is like a brick. Just a brick. Yeah, like <laughs> a cement brick. Okay, then, uh, and we're not going to show it here, but then we decided, you know what would be cool? Like, let's do some tests like you could also do at home. Like, Let's just soak this stuff in water so overnight. 24 hours, soak it in water, and then go weigh them before dry weigh them after a 24 hour soak and just see if those numbers align with the surface areas that we found. And mm -hmm. eh, it did. Yeah, so it turns out like Pukani almost doubled in weight uh, and uh, Reef Saver had Same. none. Zero. Zero. <laughs> I like, didn't soak any of the water. So he's like, oh, wow, that's a really easy way to like, you know, catch your por porosity. But, I mean, it's been a long time, but I, I'm pretty certain that that came from the community. Like somebody, uh, we Asked were talking about it. Yeah, and somebody's like, hey, dude, uh, you know, you can test mm. porosity uh, by soaking in the water. water. Yeah, so we got all, like the, the surface area, and then we also got a concept of how water penetrates these mm. different rocks. And there was no question, Pukani just soaked it up like a sponge. Yeah, it's videos like that, before we called them investigates, that really like excited the, okay, so Reef Nerd, who has learned, you know, how to set up a tank, what to do, sharing it with the world. So what's the next level for you to geek out on in this hobby? Because you geeked out on chemistry and biology, and it's testing those theories and actually seeing the results. Well, and, and like internally then, like you probably, guys probably don't get to see this kind of stuff, but like obviously uh, Randy and I are reef nerdy as, as it gets. <laughs> but like the whole community, the whole 
business here, man. It's into reefing. And so, like, what happens, we do those tests, like, everybody's in the room Just watching. watching. It, like, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And I'd like to say that I think that's one of the things that makes us and, and what we do here so unique is we actually are part of the community, part of reefing. We mm. want to see the same successes that you guys want to see. And we get excited about the exact same things that you guys get excited about. Yeah. Which, you know, isn't necessarily true in, like, not just our hobby, but a lot of things. Like, you know, are the people that sell you cameras, like, really into photography? Because if they are, they're probably going to help you in a different way than the guy that just sells it for 10 cents cheaper. Oh, yeah. You know? uh, 100%. I, I, I don't know. 100%. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Ah, oh, this next one, too. Uh, one, you're a couple ahead here. Go to the next one on the bottom. Well, actually, this relates just to this thing. One more. Uh, to the right. That one? No, no, to your... Uh, mm. No, second from the last. There we go. That one? That's the one we're on. All right, go for it. Ah, tank oh. tour. Oh, this is our very first tank tour. Yes. This was uh, the end of, two, <laughs> end of 2014. Here you are. Okay, where, this. Where was this? Because it's aquari aquarium artisans. Actually, this was uh, hilarious, right? <laughs> and so uh, uh, one of our wholesale customers uh, at Aquarium Artisans like calls up and asks us to come out and do like a store opening for her. Oh yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Like, I don't know who this person is. And, you know, eventually, like, she was so aggressive about it, man. Like, she just, like, <laughs> I, like wouldn't relent. And she was, like, finding her way through all the gatekeepers here, <laughs> found her way to me. And I'm like, you know what? Let's go do it. <laughs> uh, and so we went down to uh, Cincinnati. Uh, I don't remember where it was. It was Ohio or Kentucky or Cincinnati. So yeah. right around in there. And uh, right wherever they sell, uh, I never knew this was a real thing until I went down there. But mm. where they sell spaghetti with cinnamon in it. It's Weird. a very common thing down there. Never no, heard of it. That was really crazy. It was actually pretty good. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so uh, we went down there, did our store opening. But on, on tour, we went and uh, toured a bunch of uh, the installs that they did. And it was our very first chance. Like, they, if you go watch them back that tour, like, there was this giant tank in the entryway. Mm. There was a giant tank in the shower. So the people <laughs> oh, in there cool. wanted to shower with their fish. Oh, it was cool. really cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. So that was a really fun day as well. But that was our first tank. Tank tour. I uh, flew down there, and uh, it's 2014. Man, it seems ah. like yesterday, actually. And then a here big it is. Year. Here it is. Big year. 2015. What happens, everybody? 52 weeks of reefing. Massive turning it, point. Yeah, I mean, like, bam, man, We're everything. Gonna go We're gonna talk about it all. Uh, the whole thing changes, man. <laughs> okay. So just so you know, if you guys ever want to know the background between 52 weeks of reefing, almost everything we do here is like, it, you just know, what would be a good idea? Wild idea. Yeah, let's just go oh, throw yeah, it at the wall that. and see what happens. Like, <laughs> like, so I'm, I'm, I'm still stuck on this book idea, right? Mm. Like, uh, I really want to create this book. And then like the book idea just failed. People don't really want to like be educated per se. Right, right, right. Uh, but what if we took all that information and we wrapped it around a tank, a tank build, yeah. right? And like, mm. So let's talk everything we know about protein skimmers and then use that knowledge to select one for a tank. Mm. And we'll watch the progress of this tank. Okay, this is the other piece of it, man, that like uh, now you saw it first with the clownfish build of, you know, it's not just tell people how you do it. Yeah. But show the results for four and a half years. Four and a half years right. in the clownfish, yeah. Right, and now it's 2021, so this tank now will show you the result, and we're looking at the like 160 six right years, now. Six years, yeah. Uh, six years, so, and we've, we've shown the ugly of the uglies, too, along oh, the yeah. way, right? Oh, yeah, that thing is Don't do close. this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, so that was the, probably the most successful series we've ever done. I mean, you know? still to this day, people say, oh, go watch the 52 weeks if you want to learn about reefing. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, you know, like, 40 hours of material, yeah, but it's huge. like, wow, like, but this was the eye opener. It was like, ah, oh, you know what? It's not just about the information. It's about the result. Yeah. It's about having fun doing what you're doing. And like, and for some of us, everything gets really excited, but like gear junkie a little bit too. It's yeah. kind of fun to install the equipment and see the mm. results from it. It's kind of fun to see when you install a proper light on a refugium that nutrients are no longer a problem. <laughs> it's kind of fun that when you did it too well, you find out nutrients too low or now yeah. a problem. Yeah. You know, like how do I tune the system? How do I learn something? And how do I share it? And how do we all evolve together? And because mm. the way that we approach all those things I just mentioned is so different from 2004 to 10 to 15 to 2021. Yeah. Like, 
we're always learning every single day and there's all these different ways. So 20, 2015, mm. it was the 52 weeks of reefing. And, and actually it's this kind one, of uh, one that is fueling some of our investigates tests today, this uh, reef okay. test lab. Okay, so BRS test I, lab. Does anybody remember BRS test labs? I actually don't. You don't? No, I didn't watch this. My wife does because she was here for all of it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically, what I got tired of is listening to 2,200 gallons an hour of water and like uh, all the shenanigans all the manufacturers tell you. How do you pick out a pump? You. Yeah. Like, no, I want I want to see what it does, man. <laughs> right. And then like like I wanted to see what we did, and we we must have done. I don't know, 30, 40 pumps or something, man. Mm -hmm. It was like every AC pump. I wish we did the DC and we'd probably come back to it. Yeah. Uh, but there's a couple of mistakes with that one. If you go watch it again, uh, can you bring it up again? Uh, what we did is you can see in the top here, it's a, you know, a Turnbull uh, a stream, 6125. We show you with a few minutes of the right on, a few minutes of the left on, a few minutes of both on. And you can really start to visualize what kind of velocity it does with these little glowing beads in there mm -hmm. and hopefully make a more informed uh, purchase. Now, what this was missing was uh, like, like, a, like the our inter your interpretation of it. A human being. Yeah. Right. right. We just showed it to you. Do Here's, what you want. Check out it. what this pump right. does. Okay. Yeah, it left you hanging because uh, it didn't have the interpretation of look. It's a sixty-five degree angle. It only goes two feet, mm -hmm. but it does this, and this is where I would use it mm. because it was missing that. It really never took off. Yeah, but it was funny to see that hashtag. Was it BRS, BRS TV? Test, BRS test lab. BRS test labs again. Getting closer to investigate. investigate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, the reason I say that my wife remembers this one is because she was my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, I'm like, you know what I really need to do on the weekends, darling? Uh, and Go and test pumps. I've been dating her like for like, I don't know, probably a matter of months at the time. You're going to come in and help me, <laughs> help me <laughs> put pumps, pumps in here on the camera. <laughs> 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 this. <laughs> to this day, every time I'm like, yeah, man, well, I work really hard at work. She's like, yeah, I raise the kids. And like, she's like, yeah, but I remember those times I used to come in and help you at work. Like, yeah, that was five years ago, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Fast forward 2016. Here, what happens for the first time? We dub it BRS TV Investigates. All right, BRS TV investigates for the first time. And the first one was a metal halide investigates. First I mean, investigates ever. Yeah, and that's, halides. that was uh, starting investigates. I think even before we were started thinking about like other experiments, the first thing was, let's find out what these lights do. Right? Mm -hmm. LEDs are hitting the market, and you gotta start from the beginning of lighting to get to the LEDs, so you have some comparison of where the LEDs are going, and that's where we could develop the the 36.108 total points of PAR data charts and mind-numbing PAR data in the center, in the middle, in the route side, but nobody was doing it, and we actually did end up learning, I mean, even today. Okay, there was two things, man, that I really learned that it was like an, an inspiration for mm. me, right? There are things that you think are obvious, uh, and after somebody tells you they're obvious, but before that, they mm. may not have been. So what that one what we tested was, is a double-ended halide ball better than a single-ended? And there's a lot of people out there saying uh, single-ended. It's a bigger ball. You know, yeah. double-ended produce more light, right? Mm. Uh, and they run at higher wattages, blah, blah, blah. All right, so uh, what we found was that like, yeah, they do actually, in many cases, produce more light. But we also found that like the single-ended ones, it's that light source in the middle, like yeah. it's never in a consistent place, right? Mm. And then what we found was that you would think that, you know, the brightest part of the tank would be in the center. Right under that bulb. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not. The, it's actually the lowest par area of the tank was in the center right under the bulb because most of the light was coming from the reflector, yep. right? And then, then you could see in the shape of the reflector how it would reflect down into the tank, mm. right? And if it wasn't a good reflector, there was just like, hot spots everywhere, and it was a total like mess, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And then I didn't know what we were doing at the time, but like I thought, you know what? I don't want to test you know, lights and air, because I don't really know how the water and air and glass and all that stuff re reflects. Let's, let's do it in water the way that we do it in yeah. our tanks, right? I mean, it only makes sense. I later find out the water largely doesn't make that much difference. 
but the glass does. Yeah, yeah. Very much so. Okay. Paint, a, paint the back of the tank black and find out the difference what happens between the non-painted surfaces and the black. Well, black you'll notice. absorbs light. Yeah. I mean, it, duh, when you think about it now, in hindsight, you're like, well, duh. Well, and even like putting uh, the paint on the glass causes the light to absorb into the black. If it was not there, it would actually refract back in. Right. Right. Okay. So, so we find if you go look at all of our data on every light we ever done, back the of back the tank. of the tank is darker than the front mm -hmm. and the sides everywhere else. And what we also found is like at the time, most of the data that was being shared on lights and amount of power that it produces was being done in the air. And that is where, like lights that had really focused reflectors, like uh, uh, halides and stuff, they were really designed to cover a very specific area, yeah. produce the most par. But lights like uh, uh, T5 lights actually looked like they produced very little light. They were like way lower. So 250 watts right. of halides versus 250 watts of uh, uh, T5 bulbs, the halides always won. Right, right, right. right. Okay, but if you put the thing in the actual application, which is mm -hmm. over a glass box that reflects light in, the problem with the T5s is they're super wide angle, yeah. right? But if I put it pretty close to the glass and it hits the glass and refracts back in, suddenly the eight bulb two uh, T5 fixture or two feet ones that are about the same wattage as 250 watt halide bulb have 30% more par. Who it was know? nonsense, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, like, and now I understand something that I didn't understand before because the te testing apparatus was designed, it wasn't a real world application. Right, right, right. Right? Nah. Okay, that was the first application of BRS TV investigates where, like, you know what? It's not good enough to hear the manufacturer's uh, bullet points uh, regurgitated to us. Yeah. It's not uh, better to hear that you know, some brand is better than another. It's got a better packaging. It's got whatever. The proof is in the pudding, man. It's in the data. And if you're willing to look at the data and stop you know, worrying about you know, the perfect price point or the perfect brand name or the perfect packaging, you can say, this thing is most likely to provide energy to a photosynthetic organism better than others. <laughs> it's really there. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So, uh, 2016, Macna, still a hit. <laughs> uh, this is where we get that episode from Dana Riddle. Um, yeah. The photosynthesized supercharged or something like that. And it was the first time that talked, but then we... Uh, we captured that same one in another episode or in another one of his talks like the next year later. Um, Flow, light, and uh, alkalinity, supercharging growth. Yeah. All true. Well, and the thing about this one is uh, not only is Magna a hit for the community, but when years later, when we get to like 2019 or 2020, go back to the we have these now on file right we don't we didn't have to like suck up this knowledge and have it in a notebook uh from listening to magna we have the video we have dana's talk on video so then you like when you go back and you start looking at like oh does alkal higher alkalinity and higher calcium mean a faster growth does lighting and flow just supercharge growth well you can go back and use dana riddle as a subject matter expert we have you know his information here and we can you know get a better idea and hone our understanding of three years later what we believe about lighting that video changed so much for me oh yeah right that specific one and it still does and the reason that it changed so much for me is it caused me to go and read a bunch of dana's articles and mm -hmm. he's got hundreds of them by the way yeah. Yeah. so go out just search his name and there's like several sites that like house a lot of his or, uh, articles mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, there's so many questions that we're still answering, asking today that Dana solved and shared with, with the universe in like 2002. Yeah. And like, the, here's the problem with it a little bit is that it's written as a super intelligent scientist <laughs> for, for other scientists. super intelligent scientists. Yeah. You know, so it, it's written for the scientific community in many yeah. cases and kind of hobbyist, but really for that purpose. So what I found, if you want to know the secret sauce to reading a Dana article, it's go back to the conclusion because it's written actually uh, in layman terms. Once you understand where he's going, yeah. you can actually go back and read the <laughs> science and understand how it's stuff. supported. So go to the end and go to the top. <laughs> but once you do that, you're like, this guy is another person out there, man, who 
is not knowledge hoarding. Mm. He's desperately trying to take everything that he knows about reefing and share it with the world. And then he's desperately trying to learn more and share that with the world. And he was the first person who like, everybody was always trying more par, more oh, yeah. better, yeah, more yeah. par, more better, shoot for the moon, need 600 par, need whatever. Yeah. And you know, the, the reef is a 2000 par, we're gotta be going for that, blah, blah, blah. blah. Then he did some experiments that showed that many of the corals that we're keeping actually have the fastest rates of photosynthesis mm. between 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. and like yeah. uh, 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. Mm. And during the middle hours, it's actually protecting itself from too much <laughs> light because it would die if it didn't. Yeah. And so it isn't about that. And lo and behold, in those little ranges, it's pockets of, you know, 200 to 350. Yeah, man, like, hmm. like, wow. <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know. Yeah, so continuing the Magna thing, man, sharing all those thought leaders, again, listening to somebody, yeah. not everybody, like this yeah. guy's up in the front of the room, he knows so much more about this than we ever would hope to, certainly more than I'll ever know. And like, let's share that information with the universe. All right, next one. This one this is my favorite, actually. The RSTV investigates. The first LEDs. LED that we ever investigate is. Oh, I don't know if we It's going to show it. Are we going to show it? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I don't think it's going to show no, it. Oh, well, this oops. is uh, the big point on this one. It's a light that we didn't sell. Oh, yeah. It was the Philips light. So the first LED that we did in a BRS TV investigates we ever did actually was I was super excited about this light, you know, even back in 2016. Yeah. Learning about the spread and distribution of light yep. and the sh form factor of this thing was like, oh, this is going to be the winner. This is the future, yep. man. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the future for sure. This is the one uh, that sent you on planes to light manufacturers to say, this is the future. This is a disruptive product, man. Like, you don't <laughs> understand. Like, what, we're this little teeny cones of light, man, wrong way yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, if you fast forward, Three years from now, nobody will, the lighting will look totally different than it looks today, guaranteed. Yep. We'll, we'll emulate the things of the past because they work the best. But yeah, I mean, like, I think that this is a good point. I, like, I don't want to pat ourselves on the back, but right, like, right, right. the first LED we ever did, we don't even sell. Right? Yeah. Because the goal is to share the things that we're excited about and encourage innovation. You know? Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, it took a long time to get the Philips light to create a V2 that came to America. Mm. But you know what? It also caused the, you know, the people at Neptune in the sky to try to emulate it. Yep. You know, and Beat you know, in some test. ways, you know, make it lighter, easier to mount, and the kinds of things that transition to an actual hobby. Uh, so kind of mm. cool there. All right, the next one. This, this is actually another favorite of mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, where is, I hope he's up. in there. Oh, he's, there uh, he is, uh, Randy's first experience. Uh, my baby uh, face, my baby face cameo. The first time I was on TV. That's why I was still a customer service agent then. But you kept pulling me out of the off the phones. Hey, come help out! Come help out with this! Mm -hmm. Hey, come help out with this! Mm -hmm. And then that blossomed into my first video. You see vision. Let me let me see. Show, can you show that one more time? So actually, if you look in the back there, there's the Vertex Cerebro. Oh yeah, all things. The controller uh, board. We'll see why. Hope it goes through again. As a but like we were gonna use this Cerebra thing on this frag tank, and which he's like, it doesn't look tank. cool enough. So and Randy had this made for us, uh, <laughs> which was did. really cool. And then of course helped us dip the corals uh, for that video. So Randy's first appearance uh, in any video, 2016. There you but go. in 2015 uh, or 17, Here where is it? Here we go. Hit the scene. Hit the big leagues. Big dude. leagues. Yeah, <laughs> standing at the table, mm -hmm. filming the FMK. Yeah, so for those who don't know, uh, Randy was like uh, uh, one of the like super elites over at Ecotech, uh, <laughs> like the, the product part, testing product tester elites, you know, in the in the crew, and he also was like a super avid fan of uh, the Apex, like you said. Very much so. I read read the, read the comprehensive manual before I owned one while I was deployed, while I was buying all the products. I just needed it. <laughs> Still to this day, actually, when I'm like. I don't know how to do this thing. I don't even bother anymore. I just call Randy. And Randy's like, oh, yeah, put, do this. I'm like, ah, yeah. yeah. So you held on to the information, which is the oh, cool yeah. part. <laughs> so we hit the big leagues. Okay. Uh, and then the And that the next just one. led to a whole bunch of... Uh, so 2017, we're, I'm on the scene, and we're getting how-to videos in there. So we're doubling our content because you can only do so much in a single week. Yep. You're still working. You're working full-fledged on these investigates topics and these deep, super deep dives. I mean, those videos are like 
20, 30 minutes, if not longer in some cases. So, I mean, to write your script around that and to get Dave to shoot and edit it in a week, full-time job. I do. So, so call the, like, full-time panic attack. You know, <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. Uh, but, yeah, you, so you did all the how-tos. Yeah. Right? So we had a mountain of how-tos, and that one you just watched was how to install a booster pump. There you so, go. So, like, not, you, not do you need a booster pump. It's like, hey, dude, if you want to buy one, like, yeah. here's how you install it correctly, and here's how you're going to get the best performance uh, out of it. Um, it's a lot of that stems from those how-tos stem from phone calls that we get from customer service, and, like, this, const this question constantly gets asked of, uh, constantly through the CS agents have to answer it repetitively. Let's just make a video. CS can point to it. Problem solved. Okay, so actually that brings up a good point. So does anybody out there think how many minutes of uh, BRS TV have been watched in the last year? So like uh, in the comments, make a quick guess. Make a guess. Uh, how, many, how many minutes do you think of BRS TV has been watched in the last year? In the last year? Total minutes Ooh. of all beers TV in the last 365 days. Quantify it in days, months, uh, three and a half months worth. Minutes. Well, broken down into minutes. I don't know how many that is. A yeah. lot. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> all right, so I think of this a lot. Like, you're showing somebody how to do a booster, booster pump. You're showing somebody how to do kelk wash. You're showing somebody to change the tubing on their uh, mm -hmm. dosing pump, you know, whatever. All of this stuff is, like, customer service. Like, somebody's looking for help. They search for this for a reason. Yeah. You know, they don't know how to use a calcium reactor. They don't know when to change the media. They don't know how to set it up. Like, all these answers now exist out there. And the answer to the question of how many minutes of total BRS, essentially customer service, right. that was done in the last year, is 126 million minutes. Ooh. You know how many people it would take to answer all those questions? <laughs> a whole heck of a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the entire team would enough. have to be six, uh, would the entire team would have to be CS. 126 million minutes mm. of uh, essentially customer service and how to's, like, whether it be Thomas, you know, saying like, hey, this is what this pump does and how you should mm. expect it. You know what, with the CJ uh, STC, a little hidden feature in it is it connects to the internet and it actually serves as a backup to the temperature and will alarm, yeah. give you one. How I would, would have know? known that. How no would way. you know? I, I didn't even know until I watched this video. Yeah. You know, myself, you know. And so like, this is, it's almost like going into the store, you know, and having somebody like who really knows this stuff and all of it, yeah. you know, on tap. And you can rewind it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So it was a big thing, you know, to add uh, Randy to the mix because it doubled the bandwidth. And all of a sudden, instead of just doing 52 weeks of even, we had like all this other stuff, you know, all these other problems that everybody's having. Let's give information to solve them. Yes. All right. All right. Next one. So tank trials. That. This one's actually interesting. Sort of came, uh, it's sort of a hybrid of uh, coming out of some of the investigates topics mm -hmm. and going into, okay, let's apply some of these theories and whatnot to an actual tank and run these as test tanks, like tank trials. We're going mm -hmm. to, can you make an ultra low maintenance tank and what does ultra low maintenance mean? And we would sit in your office for hours on end going, all right, skimmer. How would a skimmer be ultra low maintenance? Well, you can have it do this, you could have it do this, you don't want it to do that, you want to, like, what's the streamlined ways to make it so I, it's hands off for as long as possible? Okay, so why ultra low maintenance? Yeah. Right? And so the answer to that is like, hey man, we had this really cool thing with uh, 52 weeks of reefing. We'd love to redo it, mm. but how do you know, just like do another 52 weeks? It's be silly. Yeah. Uh, let's do it wrapped under the biggest problems people face, right? And so, you know, the biggest questions that you get when people ask about reefing is like, is it hard? Mm -hmm. Is it expensive? And how much maintenance is it? Is it going to take up all my time? And I'm like, wow. Well, can answer that question. you know, the hard piece, we kind of already answered a lot of information on it, but like, how about, you know, like, does it have to consume your life, right? Let's take all the knowledge we've collected now and try to apply it to building something that takes, uh, uh, like, way less time mm. out of your life, right? Okay, and... I love the fact that we wrapped it around the words tank trials because right. we owned the fact that Could we're crash. trying something new here, man. Yeah. This is a brand new cookie recipe, <laughs> right? Uh, like we're gonna try something new. be a little salty at some point in time, well, probably too much sugar, didn't rise. Mm -hmm. uh, the opportunity for us to fail is built into the name. Yeah, and so this is what, uh, I mean, I'll just tell you what we found out of that because it, it took two years to find out the answer to this and you guys will laugh now because it's obvious. <laughs> uh, but at first, 
the uh, uh, softy and polyp tank is the lowest maintenance, but then eventually it gets overgrown and keeping the stuff uh, uh, at a uh, manageable size <laughs> becomes the biggest maintenance task possible. Right. It becomes a bonsai tree. Uh, and then also at first trying to avoid water changes seemed like it was the highest uh, 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 or the lowest maintenance option, but then it became very obvious that just making water changes either easier or automating them produced yeah. a better long-term result. Uh, and so if you just automated it without a water change, then like, uh, it, it, it buffers against 8 million different problems you could have. So trying to eliminate some of the stuff wasn't the right path. It was just make some of it easier. Mm. And But ultimately, the easiest uh, uh, a low maintenance tank is 100% an LPS tank mm. because the LPS corals grow, but they don't grow so fast. They're actually a lot easier to manage their growth. They don't have super big, mm. huge chemistry needs. The lighting isn't so bright that it like requires a, like a, a lot of maintenance to clean the glass. Mm -hmm. LPS tank, lowest maintenance. If you're looking for one that doesn't take over your life long run, in my opinion, that was where there it came. You go. Auto water changes. But you know what? It took two years to come to that simple statement. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, and I think a lot of people would argue, and after the fact, it's super obvious, man, but let's share that journey, share all the thought process that goes into it, and come out the other side. Yeah. Cool. 2018. We're getting close to the uh, uh, end here, but actually 19 was a busy year. <laughs> 19 is huge. Okay, Let's 2018. Keep... Here we are. You Boom. Guys remember we went to WWC. So okay. we, we went to the pros to find out how the pros did it to help build a recipe for you guys in your own home. This is actually the, one of the most impressive things uh, I've ever seen. Uh, and it has nothing to do with us. It's all to do with uh, the WWC team. Yeah. Is in general, a lot of people are, again, knowledge hoarders. That's what makes you special is I can do something other people can't. No way I'll tell anybody else what I'll do. Right, right. right? As a business, it's what allows you to be more successful than, than the else. other like coral businesses uh, out there. And like so sharing knowledge proprietary is a knowledge. Risk. Yeah, exactly. What am I gonna do, give the recipe to beat us? You know, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, I'm talking from worldwide, but no. When I talk to, I mean, when I talk to Josh, man, you could see ear to ear, smile on his face of how much of this information was gonna get out to the universe. Stuff that he spent his whole life on. Yeah. When I talk to Victor and I talk to Lou and we're on those endless hours of yep, phone calls, yep, yep. just talking about how do we really tackle the skimmer, man? You know, yeah. like, I, and it's like, this is maybe the most profound transfer of knowledge ever. If you go watch all that stuff, because mm. What really happens in that whole thing is you take people who've spent their lives caring for corals at a scale, man. There's a lot of people out there that know a lot of stuff, but I'll be honest, a lot of them don't even actually maintain reef tanks, you know? Yeah. So like, it's like, I really know the science of it, but I haven't applied the science like t to the application because mm. I haven't done the application in so long. So yeah, I know what to do, but I can't really prove to you it works because I don't even have a tank. Yeah, that's what people say. Well, you, know? you take you know you take the BRS's science and biology and chemistry knowledge, this deep you know deep deep dive into that stuff. Couple that with so the people who have been doing this successfully uh, on on uh, you know keeping it simple and stupid. So simple and stable was their mantra. There's like really nothing much for filtration. Really nothing much for you know like food or like special additives and trace elements and all so this other stuff. Amino acids came yeah, out of that one. Yeah, exactly. The the whole amino acid test. But you mirror this together and be like, oh, how can we combine our knowledge into a recipe that somebody can recreate? Feed all the time. Do your water changes on time. The amino acid conversation, like some a lot of the, like really. You know, here's the par numbers that we're in. You'll definitely be successful mm. in this range. Here's the types of things that we use. Like, man, like not all that dissimilar from here. Uh, at the time, man, most of the tanks were LEDs with T5 fill. Yeah. Like what the BS 160 is, what the E170 is, it's what so many tanks are. Yeah, like, WWC was the same. Yeah, it, it's a single point of light, like a halide with fill light from fluoride, or from, uh, uh, from uh, fluorescence. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I, I'm gonna take another th a thank you. The, the, the WWC team opened up the kimono and did probably the single <laughs> biggest transfer of you know, application knowledge, not necessarily yep. the science behind it, but the application of how to achieve a result 
Uh, and for us, an evolution of BRS TV, like just driving, man. How do we get better? How do we just share more knowledge? How do we get going? You know, keep going yeah. and like. Like, wow, that was the coolest thing. Thank As I look you. back, I'm so appreciative. I'm going to call uh, Victor <laughs> later on today and thank him and Josh. Uh, all right. 2018. Oh, oh my this gosh. is fun. Ryan's uh, first live. I'm terrified. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at that point in time. I mean, this like, was, uh, you know, the, the marketing department was like, I mean, live stream's a thing, guys. Live stream's a thing. You guys really should try out this, like, live conversation. So afraid because, I, well, one, you've never publicly spoke before. Mm -hmm. And then to, and you've always, you know, written script to craft this really concise message. Uh, and then flying off the cuff is just like, I don't know if I'm going to say the wrong thing or what have you. So those of you who don't know, I skipped every speech class. No, man, I failed the class every time. I was so <laughs> terrified to be in front of people. Uh, and then uh, very scripted, though, man, like you perfect every last word, mm. I, I guess, you know. Uh, but like, you know what? I'm like, wow, you can... It's a little bit of freeing. Like you see stuff here that we don't normally say because, yeah. like, you know what? Real time. I'm just gonna this say is it. coming I'm out. I'm just gonna say. It. <laughs> I don't have enough time to think about whether or not I'm supposed to say this or not. I'm just gonna uh, because it's helpful. And so that was it. But I'll tell you, I was terrified. And one of the things I didn't like about it, though, in that evolution, was that I was still talking at you. Ah. You know, like yeah, it's yeah. just like how hey, you're listening. But now you see this live now, it's very conversational. You guys might, be, might as well be sitting here having a beer with us. I know, I wish, I wish we had beers here. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're like, yeah, so like, it, you just join a conversation. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, I don't know, we're mm. just learning stuff new together. So that was a really cool evolution. All right. That was 2018. All right, 2019. Big, big year. year. Big oh. year. Oh, and we still got to talk about uh, what's happening beyond 2021, but we'll oh. get there. Oh, yeah, all right. All right, 2019. What's the first thing that happens? Refugium investigates. Uh, Randy takes over investigates. Boom. Look at that. Yeah. i like, you know what? At this point, I'm like, Randy is the man. He's going places. Uh, and let's keep, keep. Talk smartly going. about some of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Randy, you are now going to do investigates. Handed it off uh, and uh, really ran with it, man. So that's 2019. All of a sudden, really digging into more stuff, you know, mm. digging into the pH uh, test, digging into the refugium test, digging into all kinds yeah. of fun stuff. And it also opened the door for you to work on that WWC series, yep. which takes up a lot of time. All right. And then this was another cool one, actually. This was kind of similar to your how-tos, yeah. man. But we decided, like, let's again, let's go tackle all those questions that people are asking that nobody's answering with the refacts. Well, we did uh, an extension of the 52 FAQ, uh, which you guys would ask questions about an episode. Somebody would come back and uh, answer it. But those, a lot of those questions still lived. Uh, mm -hmm. So why not answer them? So like, uh, you but know. Though, I think the thing about the three facts, though, is we were able to take the data and the information we learned from the investigates and put, more. put it into a uh, refact a little more confidently. Yeah, it, like that was the cool thing about uh, uh, investigates is like the level of confidence that we can share. Like, hey man, this may not be peer reviewed, uh, double back science published in the Harvard <laughs> Journal, but like I can tell you that we have ran multiple experience. We combined, uh, you know, dozens of reefers here, mm. uh, hundreds of years of reefing. And we came to this conclusion that this is very likely the result. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, and you know, if somebody else wants to provide better information that so be it but like everybody here believes this now compared to the information that was out there before yes yeah well so for instance like that one that we were just doing was how to bleach cure rock right mm -hmm. and so when like i was going through this originally it was like acid cure natural cure bleach cure and nobody really ever said what any of this stuff was doing. So we right? had to test it. Yeah, and so like acid was going to eat away the organics, which is totally not true. No, it eats the rock. Yeah, it eats, it dissolves the rock. 30% of the rock. Yes, 30% of your rock disappears, and it gets these really sharp, nasty edges. Yeah. But if I soak it in bleach, the bleach oxidizes, you know, oxidizes all the organics mm. and they disappear. Yeah. No more, uh, you know, elevated elements in your tank and, right away. So then, perfect for like Pucani and stuff. And then natural cure might leave some stuff behind. Okay, natural cure sounds good, but in reality, uh, it takes a really long time, man, for the yeah. stuff to go from, you know, Solid. dead sponge to completely dissolve broken down Into, nothing. Yep, exactly. Uh, so. Especially if there's no bacteria in it, or mm. the, the, that bilk chili hasn't built up to do that or any predator. So, I mean, I'm talking months. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, and like the problem behind the scenes is everybody's saying, like, oh, yeah, you can just soak the water for a couple of weeks. Well, well, where did you get that from? Because it's not true. Tribal knowledge. Yeah, tribal knowledge of tribal 
BS <laughs> is what it was. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, Randy's doing that one. Uh, All right. Oh, PH Investigates. Up in a game. All right. So 2019, PH investigates, Let's right? Let's find out how to grow corals faster and if actually PH really does matter. Inspired by uh, Dana, you know, mm. like uh, turbocharged stuff, right? Yeah. And like, all right, well, so like, I, you know what? We find out about the pH is uh, like everybody tells you 7.8 to 8.3 is good, uh, but like uh, but the survival of the goal, I don't uh, know. Uh, if like, the natural ocean can, you know, completely crash reefs at a change of a hundredth or a tenth of a pH, 7.8 to 8.3 is a huge range to be operating in. Well, and, and like, and the reality is, is our hobby is just like, if everything doesn't jump out dead, then it was good enough, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I, like, if, if, if I somehow, man, like, uh, kept a coral here for three months, that must mean that this is the best way possible. Yeah. Well, no, the answer is not true, man, because, like, these things have, you know, building up acidity within its tissue, and it could be actually dissolving its own tissue. So if your coral isn't growing fast, and you're, like, you know, preaching 7.8, well... Uh, I got news for you, man. That might be the wrong move. Yeah. Do you want 50% more growth? Yeah. Because so you can achieve it at 8.3. I'm going to tell you that these things we did, in this case, we ran like months long tests and we did them redundancy mm. with A versus A and B versus B, but they're replicable things. Yeah. Uh, and we find a convincing result that matches like all known science, you know, so not surprisingly. <laughs> uh, you can grow the corals 50% faster if you run it at 8.3. Well, and it's 50% compounding, meaning like the 50% more growth will now go 50% more. I mean, it's, it's way it's better. It's exponential. Yeah. Okay. But, dude, man, the amount of resources that goes into that. I mean, you can only do like three or four of those things a year, maybe. Oh, yeah, because right? we're talking like three to four month tests. Yeah. Now we have to get somebody hired to do the testing when keep maintaining and uh, do all the data because you and I are doing videos, other videos. I mean, this video like team and whatnot just keeps expanding and expanding. Well, and sometimes when you do the do the test and then you realize halfway through, like, oh, man, we didn't think about that anomaly. Sparks Start another all test. over, man. Start all from the beginning because that was garbage, mm. right? Uh, and, like, you just didn't, you know, I don't know, you just didn't think about it, right? So, uh, but a, now that was the infancy of, you know, like, Let's find out, you know, the actual moving parameters and watch yeah. how it actually affects the animals mm -hmm. long term to the best of our ability. All right, next. One. This is right. a big one. Oh, uh, this one is hard. <laughs> uh, Ryan actually did a talk. Yeah. At a, at a reef to, uh, at a reef convention. This is like a little bit of doom and gloom, man. It was funny. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was trying to do something different. You know, at this time. Right. You know, I was trying the to. The ten-year tank, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to like, you know what? I don't want to tell the same stuff you all hear, like some protein skimmer garbage. Uh, I want to tell you like what I've learned over the years and how this all compiles into a single conversation. Right. And and what I, I've learned, and I'm gonna take, it, I'm gonna give you the evolution of what I learned from that day because that was about a 10-year tank, which is, you know, the path to a 10-year tank is different than a path to a 12-month tank. And now what I'll tell you is I've been really trying to analyze this why. The average reefer in the hobby only sure. makes it, you know, doesn't make it past 12 months. So yeah. you know, that they screw it up, it stuff dies, these fields fill algae, they're done in 12 months, right? Whereas uh, the current data is BRS customers, 62% make it five years. Mm. Why is it that the people that shop at BRS make it five years, or 62% of them make it five years, whereas in the general, nine out of 10 don't make it 12 months. Doesn't have anything to do with what we sell. We're not selling magic elixirs or anything. We're not selling magical equipment. Wish we did. <laughs> this is the reason that I've come up with. And it, and it kind of matches that 10 year tank conversation, but like the, what I've come up with is that first 12 to 24 months is all really about the science, mm -hmm. right? Like understanding what calcium and alkalinity is and why it contributes to the health. Why, you know, you're starting with clean salt water and clean fresh water is that going to produce a result. What PAR ranges you should be in, mm -hmm. what kind of flow you want to provide, all the basics, you know, like all that stuff will get everybody for 12, I'll 24 months. I'll get you a months, year, yeah. Right? 
the part that gets you from 24 months and uh, three, four, five, and 10 years. Preparing for disaster? Preparing for all of the inevitable disasters, man. <laughs> the heater's gonna fail, the lighting, somebody's gonna turn it on and leave it on. Mm. Some point he's gonna like uh, gonna leave. turn on your, uh, turn off your air conditioner, open the windows and it's mm. super hot. Like there's so many things, man, that uh, are going to screw up your tank between here One to and five, there. yeah. And the way that you like get from two years plus is either stare at the tank and you'll never take your eye off of it and catch it in real time at all times, or prevent it. Yeah, prevent it because you anticipate it. You have accepted the fact that a heater doesn't have an infinite timeline. Yeah. Right? Either I'm going to have to put something on there as a redundancy. Or I'm just going to have to replace it uh, every 12 months because the thing probably only has mm -hmm. an 18-month life cycle. I don't need to get every last dollar out of my $30 heater. Right. You know, I'd rather <laughs> just replace it before it breaks, right? Once you understand that, like, that knowledge is really what takes you into the future. You know, and, like, you know, you look at, like, that whole conversation about the Neptune Elmo and stuff. Like, I just want to know instantly when the, uh, like, pH is off, when the temperature's off, when the return pump has stopped taking power and mm. broken, when the, the lights are on when they shouldn't be. Valuable it, things. It changes the trajectory of the tank. Yeah. As you soon know, as the power goes off, you can go and run and do something rather than well, find out about it later. I'll own it up to the reef keeper too, man. Like, how many people out there has had a heater fail in one way or another, right? All of us who've made it past two years. Yep. 100% of people past two years has had a heater fail. Yeah. In the first two years, no. So, the, the, like, the things that you learn, man, along the way, like, the challenges evolve. You know, and I, I often link this to the space shuttle analogy, right? Right. We're providing life support to these organisms that live here in Minnesota now. And they used to live in Fiji, uh, and they need oxygen, they need uh, uh, mm. water, they need uh, heat, they need food, they need light. It's they like need a monkey in space. Yeah, Korea. That's the same thing in space, space man. Space monkey. Astronaut yep. man. He needs water. He needs food, or she needs yeah. uh, uh, oxygen. Oh, you stop providing any of those things and dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. And but unlike that, instead of having somebody, a bunch of team of scientists like going up to the space station and fixing it every damn week for eternity, uh, or sending you back down from the space shuttle in a matter of weeks, we're looking for five to ten years. And having the assumption that stuff isn't gonna break is insane. <laughs> you know, like oh, wow. So yeah, that was the that was the epiphany for me when I did that speech, right? Uh, and I've never done a speech again. Uh, yeah. I'd love to do it yeah, again. It's actually, I'm still terrible. It turned out really well. People loved it. All right, next one. Uh, we start <laughs> judging the best of 2019. Uh, you know what? Backed by a lot of these investigates tests again. Um, this, this, I think this uh, two or this this one that you're seeing right here uh, came from an investigates on like what is the cost of each of these uh, alkalinity and calcium you know, supplements, and then we can actually have a conversation. Vote one best of 19, 2019. This one was actually pretty interesting because we got b mixed results from best of 2019. Right, 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 right. We did a whole series of on and all, like yeah. every pretty cake board. So, like, a big chunk of the community is like, oh, cool. I didn't really know why I would select any one of these two parts over another. I don't really know, like, why, other than I love that brand, why one of these pumps might be better for me than yep. another one. Yeah. And, like, people, everybody says tunes is are great, but, like, uh, you know what? That little cone actually forces water in, a, in a high velocity. Maybe I want that. If I don't, maybe the CJ one, the mm. super wide angle is great. But like, wow, you like get it all in the same room. But also, uh, this was like where you started to hear like 10% of the room say, oh, these guys are just trying to sell us stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, this yeah. is shitty, blah, blah, blah. The, yeah, yeah. the comment shift is like, yeah. oh, they're just trying to push products on you. Like, well. So I, I'm dying to know, man. You guys can share with us what mm. you think. But like, is it that we're just trying to huck product at you? Or are we trying to get you the right tool for the right job amongst a sea of crap that you have no idea like which <laughs> one is possibly going to be for you? Yeah. You know, is it an authentic uh, like way mm. to try to help people not waste money? And actually, I'm going to give you an example. There's plenty of times where you said, don't buy this. It's a waste of money. Like, don't buy this from us. Okay. If, if anybody out there has bought everything the right thing the first time, bravo to you. 
I don't think it's happened. For me, still to this day. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so for those of you who've been following my tank at home, man, I used to have uh, four MP60s on there, two in the bottom, two in the top, and it would create these gyres, and I had a bare bottom, it was awesome. Put sand in there, and all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore, and I'm like, all right, well, I want to put some tunes in there, it's now an LPS tank, I put some tunes on the other side of the tank because they're small, uh, you know what, oh no, I started with gyres. Uh, but the gyres, oh, man, yeah. like, I really liked the flow from the gyres. It sent the water over the top, did what I want, but they were so big and ugly on this really cool long shot of the tank. I couldn't stand it. It drove me crazy. Took them off inside of a day. Put the, the tuneses on, but the tuneses were too forceful, and now I finally landed on the CJ Extremes. Oh, yeah. And they're the right tool for the right job. I had to for buy me. three, and you're... I mean, you're doing this 17 years later. I'm into $1,000 with the pumps. Uh, you know, they, like, are... Largely going to go, I don't know, one of them ended up in my water mixing bin, the gyre. <laughs> but, like, like, if I'm doing that, how many other people are, are doing that? So, like, let's get the information out, out mm -hmm. there. Smarter decisions. Yeah, like, because we have every access to everything. Let's just start sharing. So that was really interesting, kind of a mix of when you did the best of 2019. Uh, uh, it was a very interesting evolution. This, this one even worse. <laughs> I know. This I think from these videos the term shill came from yep, in one okay. of the comments. Is a, here it is. Uh, okay. BRS, BRS recommended. A short video on a very specific product like if you were going to pick if you want what we recommend this one's it. Yeah, it's super interesting because hmm. if you find that BRS tag uh, on a product on on the website it means it's because everybody here would use it themselves. Like I, I just talked to the team about it yesterday and like they're just sure constantly reviewing like, hey man, of all the things on here, which of these present the most value? And again, kind of a good, better, best scenario, like good meaning the cheapest option that works, mm. better meaning the option that probably most people would pick because I got some features and quality levels, but it doesn't yep. really have the super high price tag. And then best being the thing that costs three times as much and 50% better, but one cool thing that you just like yeah. really, really yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, but I feel like, I. I feel like I got a lot to share, but I don't know if there's anybody that uses more of this stuff, man, than you and I. Yeah, right? Like touched I, it all. I touched it all. Like, like this thing's really valuable, yeah. but like, I don't know, people are like I don't know, like this. I don't. It's easy. It's uh, easier for us to say, to give you know, make your own choice. Uh, like the buyers guys that you guys see, we'll talk about here in a little bit too. Uh, uh, I'm not. We're not pointing you at one direct one. It's like here's the information for these different ones. Go make a decision for yourself. Well, let me ask you this, right? If you're going to go talk to somebody who has tried every auto top off out there for 10 years straight, mm. which one they would like? Is that a value? Yeah, because I'd probably just pick that one. Yeah! <laughs> it's the same. Well, I mean, if, uh, it's the same if I'm picking, you know, outdoor gear or camping gear and I go, all right, so I know this one guy or REI or so this one person I follow has touched every single camp stove that's known to man, tested them out and tried them. When I go to buy my own camp stove and be like, you know what, just, just tell me which one because I'll buy that one. So 90% of people actually valued it that way. 10% shill, shill, shill. And I gotta be honest, I felt like a shill doing it. <laughs> and like, I, like, I know, man, I know that like, I'm providing this valuable information, but I also feel like I'm selling the slap chop here. <laughs> I don't know, so it's very interesting you know, evolution, 2019. Next one. 2019, this is a big year. Oh, our, our first, Very first guest live to guest. our live. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the Jeff Jacobson. Jeff Jacobson, the owner uh, and like I guess inventor of Vibrant. The Vibrant, yeah. 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 Brought him on, and actually, it was cool. It was cool to do this, and I, you know, there's still some room to bring in guests and whatnot, but mm -hmm. like uh, bringing in the subject matter expert about a very specific topic that you and I can only you know kind of guess at or share our experiences. But if you can bring in the one person that knows the most about it, they're valuable to talk to. Yeah, so we brought a bunch of people in then, and I don't remember what happened, mm -hmm. like why that kind of fell off. Well, that was the the premise of those video of those live streams back then was the the show after the show of the BRS 360. Yeah. So we would show the we release the episode of a BRS 360, and then uh, well not BRS your 360, mm -hmm. and then we'd bring somebody in to talk about a very specific topic. Sometimes. The topic didn't apply to what they were, you know, 
what they were, uh, you know, subject matter experts in. It was but. very cool. This is one of the things I'd love to do is to get more people in here, get people that, you know, like really know their specific field or just talk. You know, people that are just like really, really intelligent. Yeah. Like get get Dana in here, yeah. get uh, Julian, get. Uh, 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 Jake and you're like, you know, the people, man, that like have some areas, man, where they just have so much wisdom to share with the community. So mm. those were all really interesting. We got Elliot in here. I think that one had like a technical yeah, issue, Elliot, though, oh, too. Yeah. Elliot didn't forget them. Uh, all right, next one. So we did oh. our, f oh, <laughs> ah, yeah, Ryan took oh. you around the office for the 50 plus tank tour. Oh, yeah, I guess you can't really tell that that's what this is yeah. here, but so this is the yeah. middle of that video, but yeah, it's, uh, we wanted to show off, I think at the last tour, um, that you did was live stream. It was kind of choppy. So this one you kind of pre-recorded and then released, mm -hmm. premiered live. Yep. Uh, but there's 50 some plus fish tanks at, at this point in 2019 around the office, all different arrays and whatnot, uh, or, uh, all different states of good or bad or what have you. We want to show, you know, behind the scenes of BRS and how big of a business it is and that we're full of reefers, dedicated reefers. So the proof is in the pudding again, right? Yeah. You can like say, oh, like, oh yeah, we're reapers for reapers, oh, garbage, whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, or you can walk around and see that like everybody from uh, uh, Randy to Ryan tech to team, uh, marketing the team, county team, the yeah. tech team, like uh, all of it, man. Of course, all the customer service agents, like everybody here has a saltwater aquarium. Man. <laughs> like this is built into our DNA. Mm. It isn't just what we sell; it's what we do. Yeah. Right, and, and it, I think that's what it shows in, I guess, what we sell as well. Yeah. Right, like it, these. This is why these things have merged together mm. so well. So it's really cool to see the fifty tank uh, episode. So you can search for that if you want, but yeah. you can see all of the tanks that we have throughout the whole uh, facility. And that was twenty nineteen, and I did a uh, follow up while you were on vacation a mm -hmm. few weeks back. So if you wanted to see where those tanks are now, there's another one of those. A couple two. of them post COVID, uh, where everybody's working at home. Yep. Jason. But you know, like <laughs> you gotta you gotta show the ugly man along with uh, the good, or it's all garbage anyway. Yeah. Ah, uh, all right. The evolution of the 52 wakes. This one was actually really exciting, man. <clears throat> I, I don't know if how many of you out there have watched the five minute guide, but. One of the things that I always felt uh, it was really tragic is the 52 weeks of reefing. Like 40 some hours of content? I've heard like no shortage of 3,000 times that, you know, everybody says like, yeah, anybody wants to get into reefing, man, I tell them, go watch the 52 weeks of reefing. Right, right, right. And I'm like, wow. Well, you know what? That's actually way better than what I had to go through. <laughs> but it's still, you're saying like, hey, you want to do this? Go watch 40 hours of material. Not a lot of people can dedicate that time. It is not necessary. No. You, you don't, I mean, if you're the super engaged, super fan, super want to do this, I'll and you want to do it. every last thing, and you're going to invest a lot of money into it, sure, man, watch all 40 hours right up before you ever touch it. <laughs> but you know what? There's also a simpler recipe, man. It's just turn these pumps on, buy these pumps, do these things, and you will be successful. Yeah. And we can do it in five minutes. And like, it was 20 episodes of five minutes of time-ish. Yeah. But at the end of it, I was like, you know what? You could go watch like Avengers. Yeah. Or in that same period of time, I could learn everything I need to know to set up a tank. There you go. Two, two hours. Two and some hours. <laughs> yeah. About two and a half hours or something. Like, I could figure out how to do a tank. Like, that is the right rhythm like I hope people would point to. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah. yeah. And it's also not those garbage episodes that are like, you know, 10 minutes long and or five minutes long like all you need to do is five things and like forget all the things that really matter yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like they're trying to make it seem easy and it's not that it's hard man but like you're doing somebody a disservice if you think you can tell everybody they need what they need to know to do a reef tank in 10 minutes yeah top five uh, tips i mean if you go watch our uh, like a Nuvo tanks, you know, actually our number one most popular video we've ever done. 1.2 million yeah. views on Nuvo 16. Nu and then the second most popular, Nuvo 20. <laughs> Nuvo 20, right after it. If you go watch those things, those are kind of the 10 minutes. And it, like, you can actually watch it and see like, yeah, man, all that stuff is accurate, but there's more to this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A, and like that first episode we did with 10 episodes with me and Reed in the basement, also probably a about, you know, at the time, the right length to cover the topics that are important. Right? Yeah. So uh, I would say the reason that this one's probably twice as long as that one is just because there's twice as much information now. Yeah. But. Oh, well, I mean, we should do that sometime. Uh, 
we should. We had the idea a while ago to re to go sit down. Like I don't know if anybody watched the Mystery Science Theater or some like. We can. Ryan and I would sit there and we'd watch the fifty two weeks in in a straight in a row and give commentary on it. So 24, 24 hours of reefing, but more hours like reef. forty hours of reefing. Oh, I know. If we could like <laughs> Red Bull it up the whole way through. Oh, that's okay. funny. Uh, all right. So five minute guide. If you guys would do me a big favor, actually, uh, and next time somebody wants to know how to do reefing, don't five send them to fifty two weeks. <laughs> send them to the five minute guide, because uh, actually I think it's in a digestible format. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually, the, my, my I, I just watched the first episode of that yesterday, actually, again. Oh yeah. And. Uh, one of the things I'm most happy about is like almost always you see like, you know, people ask the question, is it hard? And then like all the people trying to sell you stuff are like, no, it's easy, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And like, I'm like, you know what, man? Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to own what this is, right? Mm. Like this is monumentally hard. Yeah. Man. Like this is harder than any other pet that you've ever owned to be successful with. Not like for a month, man, but for like the Five, like longevity years. of yeah. this animal's life. Yeah. Right. Monumentally hard. You're taking like a like organism that lives in Bali and you're bringing it to Minnesota, changing all of its life support to artificial, and you're going to attempt to keep this thing for life. Most people will never ever step mm. foot in Bali and you're gonna have this in your living room. Mm. The fact that it's hard is why it's cool. The fact that it's hard is why I wanna do it. <laughs> if it was easy, I don't wanna do it. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know, <laughs> I thought it was really cool. And the reality is, is it, it isn't all that hard to do the actual task, do a water change, do this thing. No. The hard part, is acquiring the knowledge, man. Like, and I think all the knowledge here is like wrapped up in uh, an Avengers Lake series. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, next, last thing of 2019. 2019. Guess Look who, who shows, shows up. up on the scene? Oh Old man, Thomas. There's a there's That's a, a man, different Thomas. looking Thomas. Yes. Uh, this was a great story. We, uh, you and I were at a um, uh, Reef of Palooza, and here comes this guy, tall guy, walking around. And I was like. We know that guy. That's Thomas from, we watch him from Big Al's Pets. Love what he does over there. So he came over and visited with us in our booth. We are yakking back and forth with each other. Hey, we love what you do. He's like, I watch everything you guys do. Uh, here's our phone number. You should contact us sometime. And then it was like, on the think on the plane ride home or later on that night, I was like, what can we do with a Thomas? Uh, and then he lives in Canada, brought him over to our live, flew him in for our live stream. Next thing you know, we're gonna have Thomas do product videos. All right, this is going to sound weird, but I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah. This was like when he came to that booth, it was so much like you just met like this really hot chick. Right? <laughs> and you like both like she and you are like, uh, I think she might be into me. You know, like, 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 and, and like you can tell, like he was really excited to talk to us. Yeah. But like behind I the scenes, I was super excited to talk to Randy you. and I were watching all this stuff. And, like, yeah. Dude, I love what that guy so does. So smooth yeah. and cool and fun. Yeah. And so when he came over and he's like, "I love your stuff," I'm like, "No, I love you more." You're, every, <laughs> you're everything we couldn't be on camera. <laughs> uh, uh, so it was really funny, man, because uh, uh, like he he fits our DNA here so well, man. I we talked to him this morning about some stuff and yeah. like challenged us to be better on yeah. some things yeah, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. and then he added in like some really cool ideas, man, and I'm like. Gosh, man, I'm so happy you work <laughs> with us, man. So that was the first appearance of, of Thomas, 2020. Now, this is a hard year, by the way, oh, COVID year. 2020, right? COVID year. We're still trying to make out videos while we're <laughs> working from home a little bit here and there. I know. Totally Thomas crazy. is trucking away. And, and now, look at this, Thomas on BRS TV. Boom. He accepted our offer from Canada. By the way, the reason you never see him here is because he lives in Canada. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he lives in Canada. We ship all the stuff Knocked up there. Knocked it out of the park from yeah. day one. I mean, like. The first three videos were like, oh my God, where did you come from? Yep. <laughs> in fact, I, I had uh, like, a, like a business peer of mine say like, oh, you guys did really good in 2020. I got to tell you. Looking at uh, uh, your YouTube channel, I think it was Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> he was dead straight. I'm like, I don't know, maybe, man, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I watch Thomas's videos every, end to end, every single one, just because they're so entertaining. Okay, this is the part that's transformative, actually, for BRS TV. 
is where I, I think the fact that I felt so shilly talking about uh, Reef Chili or whatever, like the Tunes Awesome we oh, were yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. Uh, like BRS recommended, is why it felt that way to the viewer. Like I was uncomfortable yeah, yeah. Like, like doing that. Okay, now though, man, nobody would ever say that about Thomas, man. You watch it and you're like, this guy's- You, you know like, you're getting a product pitch, but like, he's gonna be honest about the product. He's gonna make it fun to talk about the product. Yeah. And you know, maybe you'll maybe you'll convince you to get it, but if not, you, you had fun watching it. Okay, so a dude, the dude's style is awesome, right? It's yeah. just like carries good. <laughs> I get so many people who are like, I'm not even the market for a skimmer. I'll never buy one. I have the one I want, but I just like I didn't want to watch Thomas do it. <laughs> and here's the the piece I think as to why is because he's really adopted this piece like. I don't want to see a bunch of uh, bullet points. Like, and you see yeah. this uh, like on a bunch of our competitors' videos is like, yeah, or like I, can I read, read the box, I can read the man. description in the box yeah, and, and like, give you a video uh, on it. Like read a couple of reviews. Or like. mm. Now Thomas is calling up the manufacturer, challenging him, calling up Randy, calling myself, asking everybody, man. And then like really reading like every last page of the, the instructions. Forums, and like, uh, it's getting customers' experiences yeah. on it, so trying it out himself, yeah. Finding out like that tidbit, man, that thing that's different, you know, like, wow, that CHA SDC pump not only monitors the uh, like a PA yeah. or the temperature of the pump and sends it through that to the app on your phone, but it monitors the temperature on your tank. So if you don't own a pH or a temperature controller or an alarm or any of those things, this thing just actually kind of does it for you. And so if all things remain the same and I'm picking a return pump, why not the one that tells me my heater failed too? Didn't even know, you know Or enough. my furnace is stuck on or whatever. Like, like wow, man. Mm. That is what makes Thomas different than everybody else out there that does these things is he's driving, he is a reefer, knows what's going behind it. And I'm just gonna say it, the stupidest thing that uh, Big Al's ever did let was Thomas let go. Thomas go. They had no idea, yeah. man. What a gem that that guy is. So I hopefully he'll watch this because uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, but big, big addition, especially cool during the COVID world where yeah. it's just like, all right, well now we got some cool new stuff to like try to <laughs> sit in our houses. All right, next one. 2020, oh, last gosh. year, middle of the year, this my tank happens. Arrives. Yeah, my tank and the sump arrives. Oh right? man. So we, we tried to build like a tank build in my house, right? Uh, and like, man, what, if anybody's been tracking the tank build here, mm. like there are some things here that I have made this impossible, man. Like we got, I was waiting on the dumb tank and the stand and all this other stuff. So many pieces of this really big build for so yeah, long. Yeah, trying to prep the house okay, and everything. Okay, COVID hits, I gotta take the door out. Like the whole sliding glass door has to come out to get it in. People when the tank arrives, house. it's snow here. I can't take a 2,000 mm, pound right. thing down the, yeah. the ice. Yeah. And like, it was just, like, and like in COVID, like my wife doesn't want everybody in the universe in our house. Yeah. Like it's just so many challenges after another. but. You know, some of them, man, quite frankly, are embarrassing, right? Mm. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, man, people look to me as like I'm supposed to be perfect or something. Uh, well, here's new flash, I'm not. Uh, but like, hey, man, we're like doing this uh, uh, bare bottom thing. We're doing this like cycle thing. We're doing like all these things. And some of them are just not going the way that they <laughs> like have gone. Like, it is so funny, man, because I've set up 8 million tanks. And the one most public one possible <laughs> is like the most challenging one ever. Uh, uh, now though, man, the LPS tank, and also, by the way, I, I, I lean on this all the time, but mm. I didn't know in the middle of all of that, I got a baby that's born oh, in the middle of yeah. COVID is too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know anybody who has like all that stuff spinning all those plates and also builds a build series in their basement. <laughs> it was a crazy, crazy time. But you know, like one of the really cool things like that, if you're watching it objectively, like it's not always an easy task mm -hmm. to set up a big tank or even any tank. And sometimes it takes a lot longer. Like ah. I see people actually all the time on the forums are like, yeah, I've had this tank actually for a year and I'm just buying one piece at a time. And I'm just kind of like playing it out. Like, I'm not in a hurry. I'm like, oh, bravo, dude, bravo. Man, there's so many failures uh, to learn from tank builds. Our failures fits the next one. There you did that on purpose. That little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was a, uh, like a kind of a surprise uh, win, I guess. Top I don't know. fails, mistakes. We called it uh, both, but yeah, here it is. Mistakes. 
Uh, we, ha we had kicked around the idea of uh, doing the best of like 2020, or how are you going to do best of 2019 on the heels of tw a best of 2020? It's now you know early 2020. We can't say best of 2019 because the year has changed, the calendar's flipped. Uh, and has a lot changed in auto top offs already to come back around and do an auto top off best of 2020? No. Uh, but what if we share failures and mistakes and the top 20, 30, sometimes 40 mistakes that we've made on a specific topic? So we started just mapping out some of these episodes and lo and behold, some of our best content that we've produced. Okay, most it's viewed. some of the most watched content. Oh, I, yeah. it might, some of them actually uh, Water exceed change, uh, 52 weeks. Yeah, they have gone well over the amount of views in some of our other stuff. I actually didn't know this piece of these, these two pieces of the puzzle is going to come together until just now. Yeah. But, like, you heard me say earlier that the difference between a two year trajectory and a five year plus or whatever trajectory, or three year plus, mm. is A, for two years, I know my calcium, my alkalinity, I know how to produce water, I know where to put the pump in the skimmer, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The rest of it, from 24 months on to infinity, is how do I avoid all the failures all of my peers have made in the past? You know, how do I anticipate them, mm. plan for them, and know what to do when they happen? Yeah. This failure series is it. Preps me for all yeah. of that stuff that could go wrong because it happened to us in some form or fashion. In fact, if, actually, if I could like recommend, if somebody asked me what you should do in reefing and to learn how to do this, I'd say go watch the five minute guide, mm -hmm. and then as soon as you get the tank up and going and you're happy with it, watch the 70s. Go episodes. watch all the failure yep. videos because the failure videos will teach you exactly all of the things that you're mm -hmm. going to encounter as you try to create a artificial ecosphere for the next decade for these animals. Well, not only is it mistakes on like, you could you know plumb this wrong, you could do this and that, it's also bringing in some of those uh, afterthought things that you wouldn't even think about. And, and a lot of the mistakes in a lot of those videos are not considering X, not considering Y, not, and you know, it is a mistake. And, uh, and some of those are like light bulb aha moments for people. like. I think water changes, uh, there's a lot of comments in there that are said, didn't even think about that. Ooh. Didn't even cross my mind that that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Now well, that you're armed with knowledge. And some, like, some of it actually is in, it's funny because like, it's, it's showing your failures, showing your flaws, you know, being vulnerable is what is the most valuable mm. to the most people. Like, so. There's an inverse to this, which is most, what most people take. Most people take, would take the almost similar content and come out and say, top 10 tips, you know? Yeah. And like, we've done tips and stuff too. But top 10 tips is kind of inverse of failures, but it's trying to present yourself as like super successful. Like I know it all, you know, whatever. Mm. And like the inverse of failures is saying, you know what, I'm not perfect. But my failures, man, don't have to be yours. And I'm going to share them so you can have, not have to experience the thing that I have. Yeah. You know? And it's a tip. Yeah. But it's like from a point of, uh, I'm, I'm flawed. I'm flawed human being. And you I could try, be flawed to, too. try to be humble when yeah. I can. And I think that it makes it, the information more approachable mm. because. Not talking at you. It tips very much is at you. Yeah, right? tips. Uh, hey, do this. This is a tip. Like no, Failures don't do is, this because I sucked at it. <laughs> you know, actually, I, I heard this actually outside of uh, reefing world too. Right? It's like, you know, people generally just don't want advice. Yeah. Like you know, right? Like you just don't like you know what you need to do. You know, no, like no, don't. just how about you shut up? <laughs> like, like you know what. But you know what, like uh, when, you, when you can recognize somebody needs some help and yeah. instead you can just say, hey, you know what happened to me once? I actually put my auto top off on, I put Kelkwasser in there and I trusted this float switch <sighs> and uh, it didn't work. And I know full well that that's what happened to you. But it comes to an, in, an environment that's like, you can take it if you leave it. I'm not going to tell you what is right. You know? <laughs> like, and I don't know. So it's a big difference, man, between yeah. just sharing experiences and telling people mm -hmm. like what you need to do. I wish yeah. there were more mistakes topics out there. I don't know. We're, we're, kind of running, we're running thin on them, but we've covered like seven. I think there's like 70 some of them out there. All right. 2021. Woo! Starting to come out of COVID. This year. <laughs> Here we go. Look who joined the team. Mm. A 25 year plus reefer. 
owns one of the arguably one of the best stores in this in the U.S. here in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Jen, fresh face on to the BRS team, and can help get more product videos, form product information out there. So Jen, man, adds like a whole new level of things to this, man, mm -hmm. right? Because Jen, like, is like. Like Thomas came in knowing YouTube, like oh, off yeah. the bat. Yeah, he's right? been doing it for his Worked career at Big for Elf. years. Yeah. Uh, okay, Jen doesn't know YouTube per se, but she knows reefing. She knows man. maintenance. She yeah. knows reefing. She, she knows, knows livestock. Live she knows stock. animals. She knows the whole thing. She knows what helps people be successful. She's done it at her store. She's yep. done it at big, huge maintenance accounts. She's done all of it, yeah. right? Yeah. We're only scratching the surface of what Jen is going to bring to you uh, in the future. Guaranteed. Got to get a good. Got to get her used to that camera. And I, over the last, and she's only been here for three months, and it's also it's already. Psh, well, you kidding. know what was cool is like you know uh, originally uh, she said she wanted to try doing scripts. Right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. Okay. Well, like we took the script away and said, hey, just give yourself a couple of bullets and share what you naturally know instantly better. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, man, just share your wisdom with yeah. other people because. You know, other people are looking for this information, you know? Yeah. And so, like, I think that Jen is going to be, uh, like, Thomas's uh, equal of uh, knowledge in a totally different manner. They're, like, very complimentary. I can't wait. Very much so. Uh, all right. This one is actually interesting, too. Guns and the oh, next up, yeah. hmm. usually close to eight inches. Guys. So, you think about like, 2021 as we go through 2021. I've got. Thomas doing product videos, you got Jen doing product videos, and we start Buyer's Guide, and the uh, larger picture of equipment. So take a category, not a single light and talk about a single light, but take a category of lighting in general and wade through the hundreds of dozens and dozens of options and help you kind of figure out like what your goal is and which one you, you kind of need. Points you in the right direction, and then choose a very specific one. This one is actually really important. I want you, like, a, a viewer still watching this thing. Like, I, want you to, I want you to chime in on this because the whole company is listening, okay? When we did the first buyer's guide, it was because I was looking around and like, it doesn't matter if it's a snowboard or if it's a mm. home brewing or if it's a, a hunting night Camp or, or camping and outdoor archery. equipment. Every of one of these industries has like buyer guide stuff and like some of them are kind of shilly uh, mm -hmm. and some of them are really authentic, man. You can tell that this guy, you know, yeah. it, it, like hunts deer with a bow, man. Yeah. And he's, he's just going to the recommend what works for him yeah. and what he thinks is the best. And this guy snowboards, you know, uh, you know, like mm. the, actually uh, one, one of the better ones was I watched this girl snowboards. Like she, uh, he and her do it yeah, actually yeah. out of Minnesota. Oh. Uh, Jeremy actually uh, put me on her. Revzilla, another company no, that does this really well. Yep. You know, REI is another company that does this really well. Like mm -hmm. gear guides or, or buyer's guides. I'm going to point you to the what works, what's going to work best for you. Okay, so at this point in time, mm. does it feel shilly? These guys are just trying to tell you, I don't care. I don't care because there's so much value to be had here. I'm not going to let the 10% take it away from the 90. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I'm not going to let those voices get in my head and so, we're just going to share the information. Man. Well, think back when you were first choosing reefing products for your tank. Uh, would you not have wanted a complete buyer's guide to powerheads? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, I would. But where are you going to find that? You're finding people on forums who are brand, uh, you know, brand affinity. They just, it's, it's all Hydor, it's all Ecotech, it's all CJ. Well, uh, based on what? Have you touched everyone? Have you used everyone? Uh, do you have availability to use all those? We do. We have touched uh, all of those. We've used them all. We have the ability to, you know, the budget to lay all these out and actually go, all right, here's, here's what they are. Well, and they almost never say, is it an LPS tank? Is it an SPS tank? Mm. Does it have like a NSA aquascape? Yeah. Is it a wall aquascape? Like we, we can share in these things. Like if you have these things, these are really great tools for that. Or like, uh, did we release the, the uh, frag Frag uh, plugs. Mount, uh, yeah. buyer's guide. A buyer's guide to frag plugs. You know what? It sounds silly when we we're like, yeah, we should do that one. But then when we got down to it, it was like, man, some of these things mm. you work uniquely well for LPS tanks. Some of them work uniquely well for uh, uh, SPS tanks. And like some of them, and like, uh, wow, you could actually really frag these things out really yeah. well. Like, there's there's so much. To, like, it's you go to that page and there's, you know, f what thirty different types of frag plugs on there. Yeah. Some of these are better at uh, things than others. 100%. It's 
If it's not our job to say who's gonna on that page who is which one you should get, whose job is it? Yeah. Okay. It's definitely our job. This is the part that I'm asking you guys to chime in on, right? Like, I want to do more investigates. I want to do more builds. I want to do lots of stuff, and mm -hmm. we're going to do them. Should every category on the BRS website have a gear guide that says, this is yeah. how you should figure out how to get the right return pump the yeah. first time, so you don't end up like Ryan yeah, yeah, yeah. with three different uh, power heads, you know, yeah. like uh, in this thing. Like, how do I know what this thing actually yeah. does? If you go to any other website that you're interested in buying stuff from, wouldn't it be nice to go to? So I go to the category and I say, and I'm say I'm, I'm on REI for a re, or for example, and I go, all right, today I'm looking at hammocks. All right, I click the hammock category, and pff, first thing that pops up there, choosing the right hammock and what works for you. Well, this hammock does this, a double does that, a this does this, your extended straps do this. I am now already in the pointed in the right direction. I I've picked which one's right for me. Okay, so there's, this is the reason why I'm asking you guys to chime in, is because it's my personal belief, mm. right, that we owe it to everybody that depends on us for information to spend a lot of money on this stuff, to, own, to spend it right the first time. Yes. If it isn't on us, I don't know who it is. But the competing voices in the room is like, you guys are already doing so much product stuff with the mm. product reviews and blah, blah, blah. It's getting really producty and yeah, whatever. And yeah. like, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Like, do we need more product stuff like that? Or do we need more investigate stuff? Do we need more tank builds? Do yep. we, like, cause there's a, there's a finite resource here. And like, at the end of the day, BRS sells pumps, sells lighting, and we have a responsibility to people. And I'm gonna to listen to this one actually because I'm kind of on the fence. Because I also feel like <laughs> if you go to the page, uh, like the Beers TV page, it's like, wow, there's a lot of product, 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 product stuff product. here, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so. Hmm. It just like, makes you wonder if you should split it into like another channel. Product on one side, investigates type materials on the other side. Okay, so that was actually a good lead in because we actually talked about this today a little bit. Uh, now, this is a good time to chime in. We have considered as of, this is the first time we considered it as of today. Yeah, yep. Do we create another channel mm. for YouTube that is all about product selection, use, and how to guides, and how to guides and setups, stuff. all that stuff. And then leave BRS TV as purely like, Investigates, you know, build live sites. streams, build series, tank tour type things, all that type of stuff. Yep. Mm. And I'm like, I don't, you know, the reason we say this is like, that it's like, I guess you kind of like, it gives you an option. Like I can subscribe to one or the other and then oh, only okay. have my YouTube feed filled up with science and stuff. And I could only have it filled up with like uh, product stuff. And some of this stuff hits us at like different times, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in our reefing uh, career. Like, yeah. you know, sometimes I'm like in the beginning, really the product stuff super valuable. Later on, maybe I just want the inspiration and fun mm. and uh, things mm. that expand my knowledge set and grow. Yeah, yeah. Should I, I'm going to go watch the build series. Uh, I'm just going to watch that for a while. But, you know, when it comes time to upgrade my lights, guess where I'm going? To the, am I going to go to the buyer's guide uh, or the product channel over there, find the buyer's guide on lights? and watch all the lights, uh, watch the light buyer's guide, and then watch each individual breakdown of which category that I want, and then really f hone in, like, that's the light for me. Yeah. That has not worked for me in the past. You know, like yeah. when I started, like uh, I, every, Doing single, the research phase. every single thing, man, it was like, somebody told me that the uh, Prism Pro Red Sea Skimmer was right. Then they told me that the uh, Aquamore, uh, Aqua Sea Remora was right. But then when it didn't work for me, they told me that uh, it needed the Meg Drive pump mm. on it. And then when that didn't work, it needed the overflow box thing on it. In the end, it just didn't work. And then I just bought another mm. one, right? And mm. like, I mean, it takes five skimmers to get to a skimmer land. Yeah. You know, no, I could do it the first time. <laughs> Brock uh, Brock brings up a Google. He says, "Yes, look at uh, Global Cycling Network, and then their second channel, GCN Tech. Huh? It's, uh, they, it's exactly will, what we'll they look. did, and cyclists love it." Oh, good, Carol. Though, no, keep it all under one place. More, <laughs> more eyes, eyes and, and more knowledge. knowledge. You know, it's going to be people on the fence. Yeah, I mean, uh, Innovis Room Aquaculture. Keep it all BRS TV. Reef dudes, organize the playlist. 
You know, we tried that really hard at the playlist. The playlist is... Yeah. 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 I wish more people understood that you could go to the channel page and, and explore playlists. Playlist. It just doesn't but work out that way. No, it's literally, I watch a cat video and wait for the next cat video to be in front of me. <laughs> yep. I, and you just kind of, it's like, YouTube is designed to be this weird kind of like informational journey. It, it isn't mm. linear. Yeah. You know, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it doesn't really design for an educational mm. experience for that. Uh, so it's a great tool, but Im imperfect in some ways. Interesting. Uh, uh, I'm seeing split comments up and down the board. So that's going to be an interesting one to go back and, and yeah, watch. Yeah, I can't wait to see. All right. So then uh, another one in 2021. <laughs> this oh, one was a fun project. Kind of jump to the future a little bit, but here we are back. The master series. Master series. Uh, this word, this one come from the master class. If you guys ever seen it. Yep. Yep. Rip off. <laughs> we tried to emulate the master class, which is we took away the scripts. We added that it allowed me to just do bullets. Some very it's, dramatic sets. Yeah, like it's. I really try to take it from a perspective of I want to up the knowledge game. I want to give all the nerdy that we can possibly get on this one topic uh, and kind of make it just fun. Yeah. I don't know, it didn't take off. <laughs> no. uh, so I don't know, yeah. maybe in the future it will. But the information, I, honestly, if you want to know about nutrients and you haven't watched that they series. Go watch that. Uh, <laughs> Mind blowing the information in there. Like, uh, the information was so awesome. It's, it was, we were so surprised that it didn't take off. Well, it was, I know, I'm really surprised. It was, it was actually funny because in the middle of this, is right about when Jen started, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so Jen's asked if she could come watch one of these things, and she's like, holy shit, man. Can I just, oops, can I just stay here? Because, like, she'd been doing this 20-some years. Like, I've never seen the dots connected in that way. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, well, that's the nicest amazing. thing anybody's ever said. Amazing. Uh, yeah. So, like, I don't know, the Master Series. We were actually going to do all. Like every available topic in, uh, the, in master the master series, series type. it just didn't didn't get the traction. Didn't get the traction, yeah. So uh, I don't know if anybody ever wants to see it again. Let us know. We'll maybe make we'll another do one. One a year or something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was like, is like, you know, maybe one a year is the right pace. It was really fun. Like, and we had a, other sets designed, you know, that has that kind of cool black dramatic mm -hmm. look. And uh, now we got. Yeah, I don't know. Really It'll be very interesting. So where do we go? in 2020, mm. uh, 2021 20, or 2022, 20, 23, you know, 24. Where is the future? Oh man, so, you know, we talked about splitting up the channel um, and do we bring a product side and another side? So where, first of all, what are we missing? We're doing product videos like, well, they're mm -hmm. out there, we're pumping away at them, we're getting you gear guides, we're getting you uh, product uh, some videos, we're giving you the top 10 tips on very specific products, giving you uh, basic setups on very specific products. Uh, I don't know, uh, what are we missing? Well, there's a hole in like that beginner content, mm -hmm. like content just for that zero to one year reefer, uh, it's kind of a hole there, because you're either getting hit with pr what products to choose, or we're going to direct you over to the five minute guide to get started. Yeah, you know, there is like, and the nature of like, really what you, if you watch this whole thing, what you really saw is a journey of Ryan, Randy, and the rest of the reefers here, you know, growing their knowledge, mm -hmm. right? And it's kind of like hard, like once you get up here to like, you know, go all the way back down again, right? It's not like we're lowering ourselves to explain some. It's just with the amount of knowledge that we've gained up in here to go back and, and try to uh, explain like a beginner, like a very basic, to go back and explain a beginner setup of a tank and not make it really scary and not make it seem overwhelming mm -hmm. and expensive and all this other stuff, uh, it's hard kind of for us to fit in. I think actually the moral of the story is, is that like, the person that's best apt to help uh, with you know that specific journey is the person that's experiencing it right along with you. Yeah. And so like like when I was having all the frustration of setting up a first tank and I finally got all the information, mm. I was best apt to understand the person that was going through the same thing as me and have empathy for all those things. Yep. And that empathy, the drive to want to solve those problems. Mm -hmm. There's something you don't have them now. And we, you know, attempt it with the five minute guide. But, you know, we were talking to Matthew the other day from my first my, reef yeah. tank. Les says, you know? uh, keep my first fish tank for the beginner series. Yeah, we, I, and I tend to agree. We had a phone call like 
two, three days ago. Yeah, and so like, uh, like a lot of you guys, I'd be curious if you'd like to see, you know, uh, my first tank, to, uh, fish tank, and Matthew make it over to BRS because I'm currently advocating uh, to uh, our CFO that he should join the team as well and really own that like new reefer Fake segment. Focused on the new reefer, the zero to one year reefer. And, and if you say yes, it will definitely get miles with me. Right? Like, <laughs> see, see, I told you. Uh, yeah, so that's a piece. And mm. then there's a piece of investigates, yeah. right? I, like, this is my favorite piece because we get to challenge common there are, thought. There's so, so many investigate test topics that, I mean, we keep making lists and then we keep making lists and then you do go and test something and it raises more questions so we have more tests. Mm -hmm. It's almost uh, an infinite amount of testing that we could do. Well, and it's so, it's like, both things. It's does pH change the difference? Does uh, you mm. know alkalinity change the difference? Like like produce a different result. Mm. But there's also like like that uh, pump video that we showed earlier, which shows little beads floating around, right? So like what that one was missing was the commentary on, yeah, which like, is like, what do you do with this information? Yeah, like out of this one pump, the velocity is 2,200 gallons an hour, but the velocity is it goes down four feet. Right, it'll make the other side of the tank because yeah. it's going in a really slow cold, and you can see it with all the beads that, you know, it's, there's just like a laser going across the tank, and the top and the bottom of the beads barely move. Uh, then there's also a pump where there is like a 130 degree angle coming out of it, mm. and it actually only goes about 18 inches. Yeah, but man, it's blowing flow all over the place. There's a purpose for each one of those. Yeah, like, and yeah. what happens when we get two of these together? Yeah. Right? Like four, maybe. Uh, like, what happens when you add an aquascape to the tank? Well, so now you're not buying pumps based off a of brand affinity or not based on uh, gallons per hour rating because those are kind of useless, you know, judgment terms on what pump to get. You're making it based off of what's your goal in that tank? Are you doing SPS dominated? Are you doing LPS? Do you need this narrow and uh, long tank? Do, are you trying to shoot across six feet? You only try to shoot across two? Very two different, very two distinct different pumps for all of those situations. Okay, I got another one here, right? We're, little, we're giving away all our secrets here. <laughs> okay, so, you know, I talked uh, a while back ago, like, should we go up and set up uh, 60 different tanks, the cuttlefish tank, the lionfish tank, the eel tank, the NPS tank, mm -hmm. the, like, you know, every tank unknown to man, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to do that because who wouldn't? Yeah. But, like, I also know the weight that is carried with that. Could right? you imagine 50 different tank uh, types in here? And the expense, they got to get approved, they're like, I got to get, like, all these people hired. To, I mean, it's going to be a zoo. You know, yeah. like, uh, all right. So everyone wants to do that. But like, uh, I have this thing paped on my wall from like uh, uh, the, uh, Peyton, uh, General Peyton. Oh, uh, Patton? Patton. Uh, Patton. A violently uh, executed plan. A violently executed plan, or uh, uh, a good plan violently yeah. executed today will always be the perfect plan tomorrow. So the perfect plan tomorrow would be let's get let's like all, all these tanks let's and get, it get it in, in here. here. Yeah. A good one today. Hmm. What if we go around the nation, find somebody, just find somebody that does cuttlefish extremely ops. well, yeah, and then go get their recipe? Yeah, let's go show their tank. Let's hear how they do it, and, and rather than like redo, uh, and also let's not get the guy that did it for twelve months. Let's get the guy that done it for uh, you know. Actually, in this case, it's a gal that's done cuttle cuttlefish. She's on, uh, she has a magnetop. There you go. It, right. Uh, let's go find her and have her share with us how you do this and how like how beautiful it is, right? And get the recipe. Yeah. Well, now now instead of uh, us, you know, trying to get the recipe and replicate it here, and you having to wait year, two years, three years to actually like see some eye candy from this thing and get the final end recipe, somebody's already done it. So I'm imagining like a. a we talked about the Toll House cookie recipes, right? right? Like yeah. I just I want I just want to know how to make a decent cookie. But it, like if it says in the back here to add a teaspoon of uh, baking soda, there's no way I'm gonna add five. That would be silly. But like in reefing, like it's so much. Like you yeah. want to make a cookie? Well, here's what flour is. Here's some baking soda. Here's mm -hmm. some chips and some sugar and some salt. But nobody actually tells you how to assemble this or how much you need. Yeah. Okay. 
So what if there's a recipe page that says, uh, you know, the cuttlefish one, or the next one just says uh, Jerry's 120-gallon SPS tank. You can watch it, see that it's been up for five years. Uh, this is the how we cycled the tank. This is the <laughs> gear. This is the replacement cycle. This is the maintenance. This is the levels. This is how easy yeah. it did it. And said, you know what? Well, I don't know. I don't know. That one doesn't really speak to me because yeah. I don't want to do mm -hmm. uh, whatever's hard in there. The next one is Jim's 120 gallon tank that relies on a refugium to get rid of nutrients. Or whatever. Like, Try oh, that, that recipe. To me. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. the difference between chocolate chip cookie with the uh, little chunks and chocolate chip ch cookie with chunk chunks. Yeah. Dark chocolate, white chocolate, you know, all this different type stuff. Actually, I read the, the mm. Serious Eats on uh, what, I mean, I'm a little too much into cookies if you can't tell. <laughs> uh, on what makes a great cookie. And they did dark chocolate, and they found that milk chocolate's too sweet, and then they found that like the, the chips are actually too small. The best of all of the things that they found was chocolate chunks, yeah. right? So semi-sweet. I will tell you, though, that that isn't for me. I like the milk chocolate ones. I don't care if you say they're too sweet. <laughs> they're delicious, yeah. man. You know, like oh, uh, that's funny. So, like, that's the same thing. Like, ah. What if we had a whole page of just recipes that have produced the desired result, have the film uh, mm. to show how long they've been up, mm. share the challenges, share the yeah. successes, mm. and we just filled it up. Novus Aquaculture says, "I want to go around and shoot those videos." All right, man. Let's do it. Hey, uh, if you're hit up Randy. Yeah. If you're a, film, uh, a filmographer, a videographer. Yeah, if anybody out there knows somebody that wants to travel the uh, the it's nation, big plus make, if make they probably have. some good money doing it, mm -hmm. and uh, big, big film plus awesome tanks because uh, they're awesome uh, at yeah. uh, running the camera. We might be able to make this come to fruition. Make that uh, another hole we're missing. Hmm. Uh, livestock 101s. Mm. Yes. Fish 101, coral 101. We do not do fish and coral videos well at all, if at all. Failure. Failure. Like, mm -hmm. if we are providing you with the information and the gear and helping you out with every aspect in, your, in the hobby of your tank, other than this stuff you're trying to keep alive, we're doing you a disservice. You know, it's always kind of been internally like, uh, well, I don't know, man. We don't sell fish here. Yeah. Like, it's like, Why would we talk you know, about I don't know. Like, isn't that like Live Aquarius job or something? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, who cares? It doesn't matter, man. Our job is your success, so it doesn't really matter. Like, the goal is to have a successful reef tank. Doesn't matter if we sell it or not. Let's you know find out how to care for these fish. Yeah. All right. So this is like a really good example of like uh, let's get like you know Elliot in here, and when we hit on uh, uh, this is my biggest pain point actually mm. is these. These fish say all reef safe with caution, like all of them. I don't know what that means. Right. So let's like give it like a uh, A through F or one through ten or something. Like reef safe with caution. Like I'm gonna give this thing like a six. And the reason why I'm gonna give that thing is it really depends on the type of coral that you have. You know, yeah. like if you have a flame angel, this flame angel that we're talking about today, uh, like. If you have uh, SPS, you're probably okay. Mm. But if you got a bunch of uh, well sows and acans and other stuff, like this thing might go after that. Here's the five ways that you can help make it not go after it. And if it does, here's the easiest way to get that thing out of your tank, right? Yeah. Here's what it eats, the frequency at which it eats, its natural diet, and here's some habitat, like the the uh, rasses, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. It's that like. You know, rock rubble type habitat at the bottom, tons of water column in between top of the ocean and the rock rubble. Mm -hmm. But guess where all those uh, wrasses love to live? The, ro the like Mount Sea of rubble in the bottom. And right? As soon as holes you put it. that in your tank, instantly that's where they went. I went and built the same thing. I put some glued some rubble with holes in it, and all the wrasses moved immediately in there. Lo and behold. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great to have a whole video about? before you went and bought all that rest? Yeah, and like, you know, in the beginning too, like, you know, I see a lot of these videos, these fish videos, and they're like, well, you know, this thing was first collected in uh, Indonesia in 1972, scientific and the uh, scientific name is this, it was founded by that person, it lives in 72 degree weather, blah, 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 blah. like, I'm bored, yeah, I'm bored. Mind. No, like, let's start out with the things, man, that excite the soul. Right? Mm. The things like, why would I want this fish to begin ah, with? Like, something you didn't know about this fish. Yeah. yeah. Here like, it is. All right. So, I mean, it can be as simple as the clownfish, right? And the clownfish, like, 
it, you know, you guys all know this, but when you start reefing, like people are often surprised to find out, like, hey, this is your you know, typical oscillaris or whatever. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about an oscillaris is they both start a male. And eventually one beats the crap out of the other one and the thing <laughs> becomes a female. And if uh, you have a bunch of them, they can often grow mm. into a harem. And actually the oscillaris is one of the best for it because they're a little bit more docile. You mm. go into the wild caught percolas and stuff and they'll generally all kill each other. So if you're looking for the harem thing, man, this is the one. Yeah. And that natural hierarchy between them is really cool. Or when you talk about the twin spot goby, you know, yeah. they're like, well, the thing about the twin spot cobra that's so cool is it's like a really cheap fish and it you know it's a sand sifter, but it has this cool mechanism where like if a predator comes around, it flips over sideways and pops up these two little eyes and it looks like a crab and it scares a predator away. <laughs> like that's what's cool. That's what excites the soul, man. Yeah. And then now. How do you Here's how you care for this fish, mm. and yes, this one's hard. Yeah. Right. Yep. yep, uh, yep. You got to be prepared for this to do that, uh, or don't do it. Right. Okay. So that's success level with the fish, and I'll actually give you another really cool one. So uh, Jake Adams called me the other day, mm. right, and he's like, "Hey, dude, I watched your video, and uh, all those lobos in your tank, a uh, bunch of them are actually acans, right?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, you nerd." Uh, you know, like, we I don't really care what the scientific name is. He's like, no, 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 man. The orange ones, dude, that are the acans, because they look just like lobos. They're just mm. big. They're just like an orange. Will burn the uh, uh, mm. lobos next to them. I'm like, it did that. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? it be nice to know beforehand? Yeah, yeah. Like, I've been doing like, this a long time, man. We need a Coral 101 video. Yeah, and like, I bet you out there right now, 90% of the people watching this are like, yeah, I knew that orange lobos were actually acans, even though they look identical, mm. uh, and that you can't put them next to each other, they burn each other. But like, what about the other 90%, right? Don't like, know. Like, wouldn't it be valuable if when you're like, yeah, so this is the uh, uh, lobophilia does a lot of really cool things, man. And just so you know, some of them look orange. If they do, it is not a lobo, which primarily means don't put it next to that one. I'm so, uh, extremely valuable if you've ever spent money on coral. And yeah. who hasn't? Yeah. Like if you've ever spent a dime, a dollar, a ten bucks, a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks on coral, this is stuff you need to know. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, 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 is it the red dragon uh, coral, the acro. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah okay. the red dragon. Okay. So that thing is a bottle brush coral, and when it grows, it will look like this in the end. Yeah. You know. So lay save space for it because the mm. airflow is actually going to table out, and if you put the bottle brush coral below it, it's going to die. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice to know? Like when I'm first putting and buying that piece of rad dragon, 100. percent Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, and like, <clears throat> you know, like one. Like this is actually who, who does coral really good is uh, is uh, Tidal Gardens. Oh, like fan. Yeah. Almost everything that I've watched from him has turned out to be true. Yeah, absolutely. So personally, I had trouble with uh, the uh, Blastos, one of my favorite corals. Uh, and the blastos, though, like I, they would kind of wither. And mm. I watched it, and he says in this video, literally, they like the dark. They like to be in the shade. So if you're thinking about they're not getting enough par, you're thinking about this wrong. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm probably wording this stuff <laughs> wrong. But basically, he said, put it in the shadow somewhere. And since I started doing that, all the blastos thrive. I did that this weekend in my mom's tank. Uh, I brought blastos, and the first thing she was telling me where she wanted it, and I go, "This one's going underneath your little cavern in the shade, in the dark." But watch how well it does. So, like, but who? The, the first set of blastos that I killed, I did the same thing. I put it where I thought that, like, color theory yeah. be, would belong. No, no, nah. not not. It's not your. It's not what your needs are. It's what that corals needs are. I'm caring for an animal here, man. I'm not caring <laughs> for color theory per se. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. So I think that that's a good point. Like, how do we incorporate, you know, that next evolution of knowledge? Let's mm. find people like Elliot. Uh, like I don't know, Than's always doing pretty good with coral. So yeah. uh, if you're always wondering about what to do with a coral, Google Than first. We've taught you every which way about a protein skimmer about a dozen different times. Now let's actually spread some information about the animals we keep. Yeah. You know, another, like, uh, uh, one we were, we've been talking about a lot here, and, we, and again, we get back to that story of first two years, science, technology, installation, all the years after that is... Uh, uh, prevention. Prevention. Yep. And, like, I'm not really sure we should do this one or not, because as I talk about it now, I, I think 
that maybe the mistakes already hit on it, but not as finite and as straight, but we ha. started talking about tank crashers. Tank crashers. Yeah, mm. tank crashers. Episode uh, one, here, today on tank crashers, heaters. Heater edition. Yeah. Yeah, like all the ways that this thing could nuke your tank and has for us you know, and uh, how you can preempt it, right? I was but, against the green on this one. Uh, I, this one, I was like, we've said it a bunch of times in a bunch of different ways. But uh, there was a comment here earlier. I think it might have been Innovis Aquaculture, but there was a comment here is, uh, you know, that's why the reason that you those vid, those new beginner videos uh, or going back and watching some of those beginner videos are so valuable is that every time I rewatch it, every time I rehear the same information, I pick up one new nugget out of it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a repetition of knowledge that often yeah. really drives it in. Yeah. So like, and there's things in here that like people don't think about. Tank crashers, party edition. Yeah. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I had a, a friend, uh, Max, that did uh, maintenance here locally, and he kept having this tank crash at uh, this, uh, like, uh, a Mexican restaurant, right? Mm. And uh, it just couldn't, like, keep these things alive. And what he found out, man, was every Friday night, they essentially had a little rave there, <laughs> right? Uh, and so they'd have this big, huge party in yeah. this Mexican restaurant, yeah. and... Basically, they sucked all the oxygen, uh, not all the oxygen, but uh, they filled it with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, and the tank's pH, man, would hit like 6.8 from the sheer amount of people breathing in oh, here. Like, that makes sense. So, yeah, you might not have a rave at your house, but you might have a Christmas party. You know? like, I don't know. <laughs> so, like, tank crashers, uh, AC and furnace edition, yeah. right? Like, most people, like, what happens when it is at uh, uh, you know, zero degrees? Or zero. And your furnace stops working. What's the solution? Mm. Like, is it going to get back up uh, in a, a handful of hours? Yeah, that's the solution. Is it going to get back up next Monday and it's like, uh, you know, 6 a.m. on uh, Saturday? Well, in five, six, seven years, man, that sounds like rare, but nope. Yeah. You know, like yeah. uh, Tank Crashers Power Outage Edition. I'm... I, if anybody's been watching this, I've historically been not a big fan <laughs> of generators because they don't necessarily always work when you need them to be. I'm getting closer to the fact that you should just find at least a cheap one and have it around. Mm. Like, you know, go get one that costs like 200 bucks and like, it doesn't have to be capable of running your whole house, but it should be able to be capable of running a heater and uh, some flow. Yeah. Screw the lighting, <laughs> you know? Uh, and so, uh, like, it's, you don't have to have all of it, but tank crashers, like all, every possible addition you can think of, like this is how we avoid the path from 24 months all the whatever. Mm. And it's kind of like a negative story a little bit, like, oh my God, this yeah, is hard. Yeah, yeah. But also this is the tools that help us be successful. <laughs> I have to know about them to be able to avoid them. All kinds of ideas for the future. Uh, I'm excited yeah. to go back and see what the comments are on some of these. Yeah. Like Fish 101, Coral 101, Tank Crashers, Tank Tours with Recipes, Beginner Series Guides. All mm -hmm. of these are potential opportunities. Splitting the channel into two. Uh, I, we love to hear your thoughts. The biggest one, though, like that's really on the cusp here, is I mean, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm probably going to go the way that you guys say, because uh, it's been a big debate here, is should every category on the website, ah. from frag plugs to additives to uh, KZ products to Fugium lights, salt mixes silicones, to heaters yeah, to, glues. Yeah, to uh, fish foods yeah. to coral foods, have a buyer's guide that help you identify what you're trying to achieve and the best tool to achieve it. Yeah. Or is it too chilly? Uh -huh. I don't know. You guys are gonna tell us whether or not you wanna see that. Uh, because uh, we, we're- We have 142 of these things that we could potentially do. Yeah, actually, this is true. That's where we, like, we hit it. We, I, I put down a list of like, if we tackled this correctly and we really help and people on every last everything? thing, 142 episodes to that, of uh, of that like to really help hone in. And the reality is, by the time we're done with it, you're gonna start you have to back restart over. doing some because, other ones. new yeah. products. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and like the cool thing about the buyer's guide too is it allows you can you could actually finite do it. You know, like it's not we did one on lighting, but at the end like ah this wasn't you do SPS lighting. Yeah, let's do is specific yeah. to the task. Like, mm. I don't actually want to sit through 20 minutes of SPS lighting to hear how I'm gonna light my LPS tank. 
No, make separate videos and speak to me specifically instead yeah. of trying to be everything to everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm. I don't know. Okay. Lights are shutting off around us. I We've know. been at it for about two hours or so. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to call it. So that is the journey of Beers TV. Some concepts of where we're going. I'd love uh, to hear your feedback. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I'm excited about the future, too. Like, we never had like more resources, never had more people joining the team. Five to ten years of new content. We're going to have more successful all, uh, tanks, all of us together. And uh, I guess we'll see you next week. See you next week, guys.